Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Paul Brown Show. We're shooting live at North Charleston City Hall with two exposure of production. I have Daryl Goodman, he's the founder. Mr. Ray Harvey, he's the director. Today I have my special guest, Chief Reggie Burgess of North Charleston Police Department. How you doing there, Chief Burgess? Yeah, I'm blessed, Mr. 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 Paul. I really am, and I'm blessed that you're here today because, um, man, you do a whole lot a lot of good in the community so i'm blessed that you're here and i'm blessed that you give me this opportunity to be on your show no sir I, i'm 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 blessed just to have you come on the show you know what i'm saying and educate the community on a lot of the issues that we have and i think the biggest issue we have right now is the growing number of crime in our community how does that make you feel especially from our youth uh, i don't feel good at all um somebody asked me uh, a couple of days ago what is some of the things that I, as a chief, felt like I didn't do good or I didn't actually, I wasn't able to help improve. Well, one thing that I didn't help improve is the homicide rates. I, I came in here as a chief of police in 2018 with intentions to work strictly with the community, me along with this department, and also work on, you know, making sure that the community is safe from crime. But each homicide, to me, it, it took a whole lot out of me. So that, that's the thing that I wanted to do is not to have any homicides. And I know that this world is not perfect, but when it comes to people losing their lives, I, I want to be perfect in that. I don't want anybody to, to lose their life, you know, in, in that manner. I think this is a big issue because, you know what I'm saying, we got people in our society being killed just for no reason, you know what I mean? And um, it's, a, it's an issue and I know a lot of people watch like movies and TV shows and they feel like these bad guys get away with the crime. But in reality, what are your chances of not getting caught, especially with today's technology? Almost none. I mean, even though we have some cold cases, we have cases that, that haven't been solved. As a matter of fact, my nephew was shot and killed in 2018, 2010, 2010 in the neighborhood I grew up in um, Union Heights area. And, that's my that's my blood, and um, that's my oldest brother's son, and we hadn't solved that case. But there's not a perfect case. There's not a perfect crime. There's something or somebody out there that knows what happened to somebody's loved one who was killed, and we just have to find that person. Or when that witness or a potential witness gets information, they need to share it with law enforcement so that we can bring that person who's responsible to, for that crime you know, bring them in and charge them accordingly, and then also to help the family with closure. So that it's it's uh, it's not a perfect situation, but it's it's going on, and you know we don't like, you know, I, and like we don't like we dislike victimization because whenever you victimize somebody in the city of North Charleston, I take it personal. I know you. I know this issues and people are feeling like, you know, this is. A joke, you know, and um, this is real. When you describe that feeling, when you have to go to those family's house after their loved one has been killed, going to the store, it is not. It's not a good feeling. I mean, it's a feeling that I can actually pull out of my mind every day. I can basically tell you some of the family's names, where they reside at, the communities that they're from, um, and most, most all of them, I can tell you exactly what happened to their loved one. It's not good telling any parent or or grandparent or brother or sister or this family that somebody took the life of the person that they love. But, you know, my great grandmother was always say, as well as my mother, that a parent should not have to bury their children. And I believe that I have two children and I, I want them to be there for me and my wife when our time come when we have to go on to be with the Lord. It should not be in reverse. So, I mean, it, it's a feeling that you don't want to have. And I was at the hospital in 2010 when my brother's son, my nephew, uh, the doctor came out and they came and talked to me and they told me that he was gone. And that's a feeling that I want, I would not want anyone to experience. Mm. For parents who are aware the child is committing crimes in our community, but not doing anything about it, what should they expect when your officers come to their house at night and kick the door in just to get that individual out of there. Well, we're not doing anything to the community simply because we, we want to. 
or simply because we have a badge or a gun. That's not what North Charleston Police Department is about. We are a strict community engagement, uh, working department, working for the community. When we swear our oath and we lift, raise our hands in the air, we say that this badge is a symbol of public trust. And we strive to justify this tr that trust. And in striving to do that, we must make sure that we follow all the laws that are in our communities that's in our in our nation. So when we we're coming to somebody's house looking for somebody, most times we want to be right. And sometimes we'll call ahead. If the person's not a a dangerous individual, yeah, we can call ahead. But if you if you already we are looking for you. Um, because you committed a homicide or you actually shot in somebody's home or somebody's car. Well, we have to, you have to realize that level that you took, we have to be above that level. So we need to, you know, protect ourselves. Why? Because we're human beings just like everybody else. I want to go home to my wife and my two kids as well as other officers are. And I'm trying to make sure they're getting home safe. So we just really sometimes execute search warrants or arrest warrants. And it may be sometimes not at the liking of the people who we're, uh, the home that we're at, but it's nothing to do with them. I would like it to be, this is a perfect world. If you know that your loved one was involved with some type of crime, you know, I mean, you know, just, just hey, tell him or her they need to you know, turn themselves in or they can't live there. You know, I mean, that's, that's it because all that's doing is bringing harm to you, not from the police side, but from a person who wants to retaliate from what that individual in your house did to their family member. That's, That's a big, big problem, problem in society, retaliation shootings. Hmm. What, what is the definition of accessory to the crime and some repercussions if found guilty? Well, you may not be a person who actually pulled the trigger. But if you are the person who actually sat down and mastermind the whole scenario, you are just as culpable as the person who pulled the trigger. In the state of South Carolina, the hand of one is the hand of all. So what I'm saying to you, what I was told, if you don't want to be caught up in the crime, you don't want to be charged for something that you didn't actually physically do, then you need to be a man or woman and step away from that. I understand it's different. It's a different code now in the streets, you know, snitching and, you know, being down with somebody, whatever. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with you being down with somebody, but I'm not going to let somebody get me caught up in something that I know that I, I am not directly involved with indirectly. So what I'll do, I'll ease off, not disrespecting them, but I'll ease off and go my a separate direction because when the police come looking for you, the information that we have, your name wouldn't be on that. Mm. When I was growing up, they had a program called Scared Straight. What was the purpose of that show? And does the program still exist today? Yeah, Scared Straight still exists. The program, I think initiative actually was all about having people who are inmates in prisons to come to schools to talk about what caused them to be incarcerated. And I, I do feel that that does work because you need to hear from somebody who really is incarcerated, but they have a better program now and they, they're starting to crank it back up again. Cause I think they started a program back in 91, 92 and we did it in North Charleston High when I was a school cop. It's called Behind the Bars. Behind the Bars will take you, take a tour of 35 kids, some kids who are troublemakers in school, some, some kids, kids who sometimes, sometimes make mistakes, mistakes and kids who are never in trouble. You, you take, take a wide variety of kids to the prisons, prisons lock them in there for two and a half hours. The inmates take, take them on a tour. You actually go, you, you take a tour to where the inmates inmate sleep at every night, the cell, where they eat at every day, where they take showers at, and where they walk in the, in the areas where they do physical, uh, physical fitness. When you see, for me, scare straight is good, but scare straight when that guy or girl is removed from that school cafeteria, a child could say, oh, well, yeah, I'm not going there. And that's true. But if a child goes to a prison and see how that life is inside, that changes their perception of man. This is the worst I ever seen a human being live. And they, and the whole, uh, 
mindset to behind the balls do not come back that's what that's what it is do not come back here you come on the tour but don't come back in any other kind of way okay you've been in court chief for many cases describe that feeling when the criminal life is being determined by a judge and 12 jurors well, well to me being an american you know living under under the constitution i, I believe there's a fair uh, way of actually handling cases sometimes it's unfair because the information that's provided to the judge and the jury may be untrue or it may be embellished um and i think that that can hurt you but if you commit a crime in this nation and i believe that the you know the the folks who wrote the constitution i believe that they felt having a a a, a, a due process where you have to go through a case to be actually convicted and proven that you're guilty is a good process. Sometimes the process doesn't really apply to some of the charges because things can be manip manipulated, but I think overall it's a good system. But I've seen, I've been in city court, I've been in state court, and I've been in fed the federal courts. And all three of those layers are put together to deal with crime. And if you are a criminal and they can prove it, then you, you will have to pay your dues to society. So I think it's fair, but it does hurt me sometimes to see young people lives thrown away for uh, like in, see, in city in state court, well, especially city court, they give you days. I think they can probably go up to a year, maybe or less. In state court, you know, they can give you years and years and um, and life. But the federal court, when they sentence you, they sentence you to months. And I've been there when a mother was sitting there. And that's another another thing. It's never the, the homeboys, homegirls, or the ride or die. I love you forever. I'm down with you forever. They are never there when you have to defend yourself. And even if they are, they're not going to say anything for you. But it seems to me, going on my 34 years, what is very consistent is the parents. The parents and the, and the, and the family is always there. But when I heard a mother, I heard the, the judge gave a kid over 385 months in jail. And the mother just like, oh, okay. All right, baby, you won't, you won't be there long. And her lawyer says, you need to multiply that 12. Wow. You know, yeah, you have to do that. And, and the mother just passed out. So... Is the, the, the different court systems are, are kind of they're different, but I believe most of all, most of all, they're fair. How does your freedom change when you get caught committing a crime? Well, I'll say this, and I know it's kind of off off track. If you ever look at the movie Roots, which I have, I've got a copy of it. I love my history. When you saw Kunta Kinte in his tribe, and he was walking with his tribe and going through the ritual of being a man. And then he had uh, he got caught by the slavers and he was on the beach. And everybody look at that scene with LeVar Burton, but you have to really understand the scene. You saw him fighting, you saw him struggling, you saw him weeping, you saw him just yelling out when they put the, the chains on him. The reason why they, he did that is because he realized it was something he had never experienced before. So what I'm saying to you, we are born in this world free. God gave us that. And when our freedom is taken, that's when it's hard for us to adapt to that understanding because we've never experienced that in that type of light. So, uh, you know, freedom, freedom is the most essential commodity, I believe, in this United States of America. And I just believe that we should be very uh, sensible before we allow somebody to take that from us. For some of the youth in our community who've never been in a detention center what is would you consider to be like a typical day in the life of someone in the detention center wow you know i've gone take some folks to the detention center several times in my career especially especially my, in my younger career and um when they go back there of course their freedom is gone because they take they take things for granted like you and i can go open a refrigerator we can walk down to the living room, turn the television on. We can walk out in the porch and just smell the breeze and hear the birds chirping. 
that's that's when you are free. But when you can't do that, when somebody tells you how to go to the bathroom, somebody tells you, you know, when you have to go to sleep, when somebody tells you what you have to do that you took for granted, you realize that that the freedom is gone. And I just believe that in the, in the youth system, it is kind of harsh because kids, that's all they know is freedom. Mm -hmm. And when that is taken away from them, it, it not only from an adult, adult can make an adjustment later on in life, but a kid, it, it really, really hampers a kid because that kid only understands freedom. They only understand that. When committing a crime with your friends, what are your chances your friend doesn't turn on you, especially when reality kicks in and they're in that court? Well, of course, I talked to a lot of OGs, you know, old gangsters and, and, and um, folks who actually were on the other side, you know, uh, inmates a lot for a long time in their lives. And when you, when a guy told me this, uh, the guy who's an awesome um, guy, an awesome um, ex offender, you know, he was a big time drug dealer. Um, I know this because I worked drugs for many years. He said that when he committed a crime with another guy that was with him and they planned it, he if he he actually didn't have a problem with the other guy saying, yeah, we did this, we did that. He had a problem with the other guy saying that he did it all and the other guy did not do anything. And he felt that that's snitching. He doesn't feel that if a person did something wrong that, and you know they did something wrong and you didn't have anything to do with it, he doesn't have a problem with you telling him the authorities that they did something wrong. So when, when you ask a question about, about that type scenario, it's to me, it's first off, you shouldn't be involved in any criminal activity in the first place. But if you, if you let your God down, you commit a crime, then, Hey, you deal with that. You know, you, you deal with that situation and don't pull other people into that with you. You deal with it. the old, the old uh, song said, you know, you do the crime, you, you have to do the time. And, and that's the truth. You have to man up to what you did, be responsible for, for what you did and, and take it as a man supposed to take it. I know a big issue is peer pressure mm -hmm. for our youth. How important does that deal with the decision making that they do? And I'm not going to blame anybody but Reggie Burgess for what Reggie Burgess did wrong. But I've had people in my life, my lifetime, that actually have kind of like really talked me into some things only because I was willing to listen. And I did some stupid, stupid things. And I also actually talked some other people to some stupid things when I was coming up. And they did the wrong things. Um, <laughs> I just think, you know, with me is that be your own man, follow your own movement. Be your own man, follow your own movement. That's what my father always told me. And I, I feel like anybody can kind of get you caught up in situations, but you know, you, you have to stand yourself, take a stand. And like I said earlier, I know the phenomenon in, on the streets about, hey, you can't dime me out, whatever the case is. You don't have to tell them somebody, basically. Just keep yourself away from that. But if you, you weren't involved with something and somebody says that you were, then you need to prove that you weren't. And sometimes you have to tell the truth on, about somebody else. Always tell the truth about you, but sometimes you, you may have to tell the truth about what you know somebody else did so that you wouldn't have to pay the consequences that other people's faces. One other issue is education why is that so important and why are our kids take they're not taking it as serious as it should be education is the only only options we have to strive in this nation because everything that this nation is about is about education you have to know how to read write um math science um and and with the ai that's going on artificial intelligence you need to you know you need to be even even brighter there because you have to understand how things are working in this world. Education to me is, is big. And there was a time in my life when I was younger that I thought education was just a normal thing that you go through. You go to school and you have to learn and then you have to pass. But when I, you know, I got older coming to my later years of high school, I realized how important my education was because it, it afforded me 
to go to college for free. I went to college to play football and run track. They paid me for four years to do that. And I got a, a degree uh, because I did that for free. But then the, the free part of it was now that I'm a chief of police, I would have never got this opportunity if I didn't have that college education because that's one of the prerequisites when you know uh, mayors or city managers or city government hire you. They expect you to have a degree or um, a command college. So um, to me, education is, is, is important. I just think that we as African-Americans and I'm not, you know, I'm not just leaning on one race, but I'm talking about a race that is my culture. We as African-Americans, especially in my city, I think we just don't buy into the educational process as much as we should. And I think that we need to do more of that. Chief Burgess, we're running short on time. If someone wants to get more information about your programs that you have for our youth and all the other exciting things that North Charleston Police Department does for this community, what should they do? All they got to do is go to the city of NorthCharleston.org website and you can pull up the police department. And when you pull it up on the website webpage, you will see North Charleston PD. You see a lot of community engagement programs. You see a lot of uh, uh, neighborhood programs. You see a lot of uh, law enforcement programs. And then you see a lot of educational programs. As a matter of fact, next month we have our uh, probably, well, I think it's the ninth annual um, um, Black History Month program okay. where we honor people at, 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 at uh, Royal Baptist Church on Liberty Hill. So um, it, it's a lot of things that North Charleston have. And the reason why we do it because we are servants of the public. So we need to do and replicate what's going on in the public so the public can see what the police department, or what we're really trying to do. We're trying to be servants. That's all. Chief Burgess, I really appreciate you coming on the show and just educating our community on all the things that the biggest issues that crime. And um, I look forward to possibly coming back and possibly, you know, having another show with some more other topics. Mr. Paul, you, you can come and be with me. I'll come hang out with you, whatever. I, I don't have a problem because if we're going to we can save lives, mm -hmm. you and I, yes, let's sir. do it. Let's that, do that's it. what I'm about. Thank you, Chief Burgess. God bless you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching the show and you be encouraged. Thank you.